All right, so, so we're coming to a greater understanding of head shape, right, for AIM. Uh, we've looked into the hosel now. Uh, you tend to do better with a mallet, uh, which you said you kind of grew up as a kid using. Um, so it's funny how we're kind of like salmon. We kind of go back to where we were born. Um, uh, and, and we then looked into the hosel. Like you said, the more forward set, it looked more, it looked more uh, close to you, so you would tend to feel like you wanted to open it. Uh, and the back set uniquely looked more open, so you felt like you need to close it. Yep. So we're playing with this perception system of yours. Um, and, and there might be this internal struggle between what you, what you want to fit into, but yet there's this party that says, I really want to. I want to do the. I want to do myself justice and get the right scenario. And I think most people fall into that. They go, "Man, I don't. This putter looks different to me. Um, I wouldn't buy this off the rack per se because I've never had the option of it. But I can't fight what I'm seeing happening, right? So, so years ago, I knew how lines were important, right? And I knew that I had to create something that allowed me to um, change lines. So. Uh, we have this fancy uh, wet erase marker, right? And I have this line template. I invented this years ago so, for the fitting process so I could vet, you know, without throwing the baby with the bath water. That's the old analogy, like the baby got the last bath and then they, th I don't know why you give a baby the last bath, but um, <laughs> you'd think you'd give him the first one. But, uh, but essentially don't throw the baby out with the bath water. So you could have all these great attributes to this putter and then you put the line in the wrong spot and you just totally ruined it, right? It's like putting some weird ingredient into a nice cocktail, right? So lines are very important. And, um, and so I created this line template so I could just put a line on a putter on a blank slate right here and wipe the line off and put it in a different spot and see what, what the value of a line does. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a line right now, I'm gonna draw a line in the back of the cavity where it traditionally is on most traditional putters and we're gonna see what it does for you. Mindful, everything I'm doing, I'm, I'm collecting, I'm collecting uh, data on you. I'm, I'm getting a beat on how you see things, right? So I'm getting a beat on, oh, when I do, when I make focus move forward, I get a response out of Cordy. If I move focus back, I get the, I get an opposite response. I'm starting to understand how you're processing what you're doing in your environment. All right, so we put a line in the back. Does that look square? He actually, so this trends with, you know, making everything look more, moving some focus back, you tend to, um, you know, the mallet says move forward, mm -hmm. which is unique, the face progression, but I threw a line in the back there and you aimed a dead perfect, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no right or wrong answer, um, but I'm gonna put a line in the front and see what that does. So now I have a line in the top line, one single line. Definitely looks different, it feels different. Mm -hmm. And a little bit right of center, right? So then we can check what does two lines do on the top line. Again, a different visual, right? Yeah. Yeah. The two lines framing the ball, less focus on one. That even took you farther left. Hmm. Definitely most comfortable with the first option that you put on there. The line in the back. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes you can put too many forward aiming variables and you need something that just kind of balances out. Um, often you go totally forward frontal assault, sometimes it's a total back assault. So I'll draw two lines in the back just to see since one we kind of have a good idea that it works. And I'll put two lines in the back and see now how that looks to you. More left. I'm definitely most comfortable with the lines in the back. Yeah. Visually. Yeah, and that could be Merely out of um, out of habit, yep. right? Like that's where they are, so you, you're you're more accustomed to that. And it could be purely it gets you looking. So two lines in the back were too much, right? Hmm. 
Isn't it crazy? Yeah. Spot on. Yeah. So, uh, and it's a good height. Hmm. Right. So, if you know, if it, if you saw somebody burying it into the ground or leaning the handle back and getting way up here, I had a number two ranked player in the world aiming this high. If you can imagine it. Wow. Yeah, I, I was flabbergasted. Oh. I was like, wow. Right. So that player felt like they had to lean the handle back to uh, to make it look correct. Hmm. Right. And it was and it wasn't just one thing. It was the whole package of that putter. Uh, and then I, I put in their hands a putter I made for Bryson years ago called the Brick, which is basically a rectangle with the shaft going in the middle, which progressed the face farther forward of the shaft. Very rectangular, looks very kind of close. And without me saying what to do, aimed it dead perfect because he felt like he had to forward press his hands and aim more to the right. So, so we, we've gone through a progression here, mm -hmm. right, of looking at head shape to hosel offset right. and then lines. Is this aim bias is how you do your fitting, right? Is this the same way exactly. your fitting yeah. process the yeah. same way we just learned about the yeah. impacts? There's no right or wrong answer. My job is, I, I don't look at myself as a fitter uh, or a teacher, but a behaviorist, right? I'm, I'm looking at, and, and looking at the tells that you are giving me. If you aimed higher, I would say, he's leaning the handle back. Why is Cordy leaning the handle back? He's trying to close the putter, right? If it's going lower, he's trying to close it right or if he's going right he's more right he's, it looks more close so i have to be cognizant of what you're doing and you may not know what's going on you just go wow this is you know he just changed this i only make one move at a time and then i learn from every one of those moves um what what you're seeing sometimes i'll get somebody that just way way over here and if i quit if i quit then the fit's over but i go what do i got to put in their hands that looks closed mm. right and I got to go way outside of my thinking and go get away from your own model, get out of your own way, David, and uh, and, it, and then I usually get the job done. Um, and that's the cool thing is that I learn more from the hard fits than I do the easy ones. Yours is pretty classic, um, but in an opposite way. Uh, from from so you're not normal, Cordy. You know. It's kind of cool. Um, uh, it's good to confirm that. Yeah, today. yeah. Your your wife will probably Appreciate confirm uh, yeah, that you're sure. you're weird too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's generally uh, when it comes to head shape. We start with head shape, and then we go to hosel, and then we fine tune it with lines. I look at lines as fine tuners, right? Uh, sometimes they're the, the the bomb diggity, and sometimes they're just they're they're um, they're actually detrimental. A lot of people can't handle the the, the line geometry. Right, so I'll show you a different scenario here. Um, I'll put a dot on there. So a dot could say, hey, look over here. Kind of like Cindy Crawford's got the, the mole and you're drawn to her Marilyn Monroe or whatever, you're drawn to that. Wow, there's a, there's, that's not normal, right? A dot is non-geometric, mm -hmm. but it throws vision to that location. So if I put a dot here on the, on the top line and then say, hey, aim this, some people need, they need something, right? They need a, a lines are too x-axis, right? They, pr they produce too much linear geometry and a dot um, doesn't do that. So you aim it just a little bit right, mm -hmm. right? So you need that, that trail line to be able to aim the putter. Yep. Yeah. To make that whole package come together is one really awesome aimer. Right, and we get that benefit of the toe up being even stronger with that back set hosel. Now, you may say, Dave, I don't think I could handle that hosel. It's just too extreme for me. I would, I would get out on the golf course and I would struggle with it. Um, and then, uh, you know, I might have to go through, you know, other ways to make you aim more left. So we can often get a, a fit out of multiple different ch variables. So there's, so if we think of a putter and, and lines and shapes. Um, uh, we can, we can actually get different values out of, uh, out of different line combos. So think of things as forward-looking variables, some things as backward-looking variables. And I need more forward-looking variables, but the person wants a backward-looking head. So it might be more lines in the front, might be a back set hosel, might be a difference in, 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 the, in the neck of the club plus the others, uh, the other variables, to, to put three strong forward-looking variables with one back-looking variable, or two and two, or Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, yep. so um, you know, like for other tour players I've had, they said, you know, Dave, I just, I, I, I got to cheat on one putter. I just do it. I, I got to see something new all the time. If I'm not putting great or I feel 
uh, uncomfortable, I, I go and find a different, you know, different putter to change the look. And we hear that often. So what I've made for them is several, um, several different putter types uh, that have different head shapes and different hosels and, and line combos so that when they do cheat, we do know that it still aims, mm -hmm. right? One they're really good at and fast, that's the one that we made for them, but yet they can still aim the others really good. So that's kind of neat how we've, you know, we've taken this concept and we've taken it to develop different line templates so players could switch out their line template te line templates on the putter and they're already pre-machined into the head and so we can we can take them out and screw them into to different head styles change line combos to get a different look if someone were to get ahead and say over time i, I aim this line combo better or i want to change it out i can do it uh, and i think that's kind of a neat thing that 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 spawned off of the development of this line template is basically taking this line template and turning it into a variable that could, could go on the putter and be moved around on the putter, um, which is, I think, a pretty innovative concept um, of being able to change focus patterns. So for example, if this line combo with the line in the back, you would aim too far to the right, and I moved the line combo up top, and that aimed you more to the, more to the left, then, then we could, you could stay in this family of head if that's what you felt like was the best for you, but have a different line combo than you've ever seen before. So um, anyway, yeah, that's uh, there's something. There's since lines are lines can be really bad and they can be really really good. Uh, you just got to figure out which line is good for you.